people think I'm damaged goods. I'm worried about losing my job. Will I ever get a transplant? I want to see my children graduate from college. How can I afford this? I don't want to be a burden. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed with information. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever fall in love and get married. I just want to play with my friends. You're listening to Kidney Talk, streaming health, happiness, and hope to the renal community with your hosts, Lori Hartwell and Stephen First. Welcome to Kidney Talk, and we're talking about a very important subject. Of course, to Lori, it's super important. It's the, Well, you see it on all the TV's channels right now. They it's, it's, want you to watch. They want you to watch. So you think they created this potential just pandemic like of the swine flu. Just like they created Y2K, and just like they created the bird flu, and next week it's going to be the M&M's flu. <laughs> Well, anyways, we're here with Lana Kocharova, who is the Quality Improvement Director for the Southern California Renal Disease Council. Wow, so welcome to the show, important. Lana. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, guys. I have a question. <laughs> what is a pandemic as opposed to a flu? A pandemic is a word for a special flu. Usually it's a new flu that has never been around before. And the word is used when it covers many countries of the world. It goes around the globe, correct? Exactly. In 80 days. (laughs) (laughs) That's my question is, yes, it's in a lot of countries, but there's 14 people in the United States and there's five people in Australia. And why is all this hysteria? One person has died. One in the U.S. No, there's been 150 in Mexico, Yeah, but that's right? Mexico, though. We don't really well, count that as a country. Well, but that's why they call it pandemic, <laughs> because it, when it's within one country or region, it's endemic. When they say pandemic, when it covers the whole entire globe. And they usually use it for the new strength of virus that we've never seen before, and people don't have immunity to that virus yet, and we don't have vaccinations for that virus yet. That's why it's dangerous. But but the swine flu has been around for hundreds of years. That is true, but we, we never had a vaccine against it. About 30 years ago, I saw a commercial on TV today. The president, about 30 years ago, was warning people and encouraging them to get a swine flu vaccine. But I guess it never happened. But so, doesn't Tamiflu work for the swine flu? Yes. Tamiflu. So we have it. You just <laughs> proved my point. <laughs> I don't yes. get it. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the two antiviral drugs that do work for this strength of flu is Tamiflu and Rulenza. And okay. is it easy to get Tamiflu? Mm-mm. No, I think Not people stockpiled it Not at ahead all. of time. I know a lot of companies stockpiled Tamiflu and masks and everything. I know a lot of patients right now are really afraid because you have to go to dialysis three times a week and basically there's not a better place on the planet where you can catch things is in a dialysis unit with other patients. Well, you haven't been to Dodger Stadium bathroom, have you? <laughs> it's horrible there. <laughs> well, and the men but have you to don't pee have to go. But you don't have to go. Well, listen, now that I have a kidney transplant, I have to go. No, you don't have to go to the Dodger game. Uh, <laughs> but he wants he, to go. He wants to go. But it's important to know that, you know, patients need to go to dialysis. But what can they do to protect themselves? Because I heard that they just issued masks to dialysis units. They're prioritizing they issued masks. masks. They have a little There's priest a, that comes in. Masks. They're, they're oh, issuing. Masks. Because it's interesting about the masks, the blue masks that you see do not prevent the virus. It's the a certain kind of mask. It's the N95 it's the, mask. The George mm-hmm. Bush mask. <laughs> no, the N95 mask, the one that you use for painting and dust Oh, removal. the harder mask that you yes. can squeeze the nose thing. Exactly. That's yeah. the only one that prevents a flu from being spread, not the other one. Is that correct? Well, um, right now, what the CDC recommends for, uh, for <laughs> patients that are infected or suspected infected, they can actually wear surgical masks. And the healthcare workers that are taking care of those patients, they have to wear N95 mask. But to tell you the truth, the mask can only help infected person not to spread the germs around. It, it can't keep you from getting the germs. Correct. So would, if you go on an airplane, 
Should you wear a mask if you're a transplant person or on dialysis? Uh, if you're transplant, I would suggest that you do wear it. How do you eat the meal, though, on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question. Either you stay hungry all the time or you take a risk of getting infected <laughs> and eat your meal. You get a straw and you shove it up under the mask and, and drink it. That's what you all do. Right. I guess it's really basically washing your hands or saying you need to wash your hands and it has to be for 15 seconds. Or 20 seconds. Um, but they, I actually heard instead of a mask, it's better to have a hand sanitizer. That to constantly to, wash your hands with hand I, sanitizer. Well, I, I like the hand sanitizer because, you know, I got to tell you, you go to a, a public restroom, you wash your hands, and what's the next thing you do? You take the door handle and, and you, you have to open it. And you have to open it. So what do you do then? I know. I you try just, to open it with my feet, but it's just impossible. It's impossible. Well, I take the towel and use the towel and to grab the handle. The I throw it on the floor when I leave. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, usually <laughs> <laughs> there's a garbage outside the mm -hmm. bathroom in a public restroom. Really? Yes. Honestly, do you think this is uh, blown up out of proportion? I heard on the radio that it's no worse than our normal flu that we get every winter, and it's milder. At this point of time, because I'm a nurse and because we do uh, oversee dialysis facilities, I'd rather to be safe than sorry. I'd rather distribute a lot of educational materials to the facilities and to patients and keep them informed rather than deal with the situation when everybody's sick already. Now, did you do the same thing on the bird flu? I, I don't, don't think, think it, it got to that proportions like right now. It didn't get to a level five. Right now, we're at they level were five. killing chickens like crazy. And I heard the one country killed 90,000 pigs or something like that. Yeah, Egypt. And, Egypt. In Egypt. Egypt yeah. Well, I just don't get, I don't, I really don't get the hysteria, but I also don't believe in global warming. So, you know, I'm crazy. <laughs> what channel do you watch? <laughs> <laughs> I listen to NPR. Um, but uh, I mean, I just think this whole thing with the Y2K and the bird flu and now. So you're a cynic. Show me the proof. You know, well, that, you know, in the United States, one person died, a toddler who lives in Mexico and he was visiting in Texas and he died. Well, um, as of this morning, we have 109 confirmed cases. And by the way, there is one suspected case among dialysis patients here in California. So we should find out either later today or tomorrow. Well, and let's just find out what unit he goes to. So, uh, uh, and then local. we don't get it. And local how would San you Fernando quarantine? Valley. And what really? How would yeah. you quarantine a unit? How would you do Th that? That's, that's, you kick the patient out of the unit? That's a good question. <laughs> no, you definitely don't do that. But that is a classic example if, if it will be confirmed. Because patient did travel to Mexico. Oh, well, that's back stupid last, to begin with. <laughs> came back last week and uh, came to dialysis already with symptoms and the dialysis unit did an incredible job they conducted doctor they started antivirals immediately and both patients and uh, patient and his wife are feeling great i mean not great but much better already mm -hmm. but um people could be contagious for about seven days after they possess symptoms so if the patient was sneezing and coughing and using public places and I, hate touching everything, yeah. I hate when patients cuss i hate when patients cuss because <laughs> when they get angry Cough. You know, oh, cough. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, well, that's all my Russian accent. <laughs> now, do they have pandemic uh, swine flu in Russia? Yes, there were some cases already. Really? I read, yeah, in yeah. Europe and including Russia and Ukraine. Is that from contaminated babka? <laughs> well, I have no idea. <laughs> well, do you know what the proper way to cough is, Stephen? Yes, I heard that on the radio the other day. Yes. You go to the closest person and you just spray them. <laughs> no, I, I heard you. I you heard you cough, cough in your shoulder. Yeah, you cough into but your shoulder. But then your shoulder. shirt is contaminated for the rest of the day. Well, you're, you cough it. And then when you blow your nose or something, and I'm guilty of this, you have your Kleenex and you just put it in your pocket. You have to you throw, have to it, throw away it away immediately. immediately. Well, you throw it on the floor, right? <laughs> Because it's important that all, you know. Well, wait, she things. just took a Kleenex. Are you going to do a demonstration? <laughs> Would you like me to? The, I, I want show to see him, you coughing your underarms. Show him how arms. to cough. Show him the right way to cough. The right way to cough. <laughs> like that. Yeah. And, and, and at least, because it's 
better than when you do it in you know in your hand because then if you're not able to wash your hands right away right. after that you potentially can contaminate every okay. object you but touch are you cough into your shirt mm -hmm. and what if you have expelled phlegm you, then it's dripping off of your shirt How and do i you think cough? people how, how do, do you i cough, cough like that you know what i refuse to cough i don't cough I made it a, a, a commitment yeah, in my life. You gave it up for Lent. What about I sneezing? I don't cough. <laughs> sneezing, I, you know what? I swear, I swear, I don't. I sneeze, but you know how people go, ah, gee, and mm -hmm. I, I do an inward sneeze. I go, <clears throat> like that. Well, lucky you, you I cannot talented. do that. You are very talented. I, I'm very, um, I, I'm multi-talented. Uh, now, did you, were you scared on Y2K? No. All right. I was petrified of my computer. No, I mean, that was so ridiculous. Oh, my God, we're changing from 1999 to 2000. The world is going to go to hell. Well, There's a guy on the street in Hollywood that screams the world's going to end next Wednesday. Every Thursday, I go to him. I go, so? When? <laughs> well, I think it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, one of my favorite snacks um, is the French fried pork rinds that you get at 7-Eleven. Oh now, is it true that you're not allowed to eat those anymore? Absolutely not. Because any pork is being processed meat, you know, you, you cannot get contaminated through that. So oh, you can't get contaminated pork Absolutely rinds? not. And not contaminated and not infected. So people, please don't be afraid to eat pork or products from pork. I okay. think the biggest risk of eating pork is whoever's preparing your food if they're not washing their hands. <laughs> really? You're more likely to get the flu from them preparing your food. Because, you know... It would really devastate the luau industry because, you know, you have the wild pig. People are going to lose their jobs over this. Any closing thoughts, uh, Lana, that we need to let people know if they're, if they're sick, they need to, you know, go to the doctor to find out if they have a fever. Mm -hmm. What are the signs of a flu? Isn't it? It's uh, the regular flu Regular symptoms. signs of a flu, which is um, a Except fever. you snort when you cough. Fever of 105 <laughs> and more. 100 and what? 100.5. Well, that's a lot. 100.5. Go to a seizure. 100.5. Oh, <laughs> and then uh, fever, chills, headache. Um, I wish I had uh, the chills now. It's uh, boiling in here. And what is sometimes, not all the time, but some people have uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Mm -hmm. But it's not like... My three favorite things. That's my law firm, actually. <laughs> well, but you know what? Right now, when they're trying to identify whether that person could possibly have that swine flu or H1N1, right. uh, in addition to the flu-like symptoms, they have to have one of the following, either recently traveled to Mexico or been in touch with someone who is sick currently and who's been traveling to Mexico. So those couple of links, they have to be in addition to the flu-like symptoms for healthcare workers to even put you in a category and test so, you. So like the cases in Australia, you? those two people have been to Mexico, the, the people in Australia, the five people in that have it in Australia? Can't comment on those, but I'm just telling you what Everybody officials here. are telling. Yeah. Everybody here Well, that's the United been. States, but what I'm saying is, how many countries is it in? Seven or eight countries? Maybe, maybe those people have been recently traveling somewhere or they've been in contact with somewhere. Because if you think about it, you contaminate me, I'm going to contaminate someone else. And it can happen like this. Uh, this morning, I saw um, on the internet they were showing the Metrolink. And when people travel, somebody who sneezes in the morning time, that infection can stay on the doorknob or stay somewhere oh, on the seat sure. overnight. So 24 hours later, somebody else is going to touch that seat and then touch the nose and that's it and that person is infected so, so the most important that's, thing is not to touch your nose or your your eyes or your face exactly yeah, but how many people involuntarily don't even know it they i touch my face all the time you know and it's like everywhere you go to the grocery store mm -hmm. you take the shopping cart you know it's like i think we what are we going to do live in a bubble the, of course i think you no live in a bubble <laughs> <laughs> there was a what? movie called The Boy in the Bubble. It was starred John Travolta. And, I, I remember. Uh, I love that movie. The Boy in the Bubble. I watched it when I was in the hospital one time. Um, it was a great movie because I felt like I was in a bubble. As I identified. But I was only about 14. I suggest that um, we keep people informed, yeah, especially patients and their families. And as a nurse, I suggest, and what we do in my organization, we send daily fax blasts to the community, to all dialysis units. Daily, say that word again. Fax blast. It's when you do a fax 
blasts and it goes to all and facilities. It blasts. It blasts. You, you blast a fact. At this point, there is no confirmed cases among dialysis patients, which is great. Except the one mm-hmm. you said that's in... That's not confirmed yet. It's a ah. suspected. It's suspected so. not, in, not until it's confirmed. But I mean, let me ask you something. Someone, let's say this person mm-hmm. in the dialysis unit is sick, they're vomiting, mm-hmm. they have high fever. How do you know it's not regular flu or swine flu? Uh, there is a special test, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a nasopharyngeal swab. That so you take something and stick it up their nose. Yes, but it's not as easy as you <laughs> describe. Oh, you're going to stick it way up the uh, nose? What, what people need to do if they suspect... How do you, you suspect flu-like it? flu-like symptoms. If you have a flu-like but symptoms. That's what a flu is. You have flu-like symptoms. Well, yeah, but now, right now. So if you have flu-like symptoms, you should suspect that it could be the swine flu. Also, if you recently traveled outside to of Mexico. the U.S. Um, because or, if, or that to, or came to Mexico. in contact or rode the metro this morning. <laughs> or been on a cruise. <laughs> so they do the special test. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the nose, they send it off somewhere because they have to sp- send it to a special clinic. Yeah, special in Mexico. Lab. Public health departments are taking care of that solely oh, them. That gives me so, a lot of confidence. <laughs> Public health. Public health, yeah. So the the test could be ordered through a local lab, but all the tests that need to be tested, all the swabs that need to be tested, they all uh, need to be sent to the public health department, and it's city and county specific ones and unfortunately all of them have their directions that are slightly different so if dialysis facility is concerned and they're doing this test on a patient they should contact their local city or state public health department and see what needs to be done with that spacement that now that sounds a lot easier than it is it's like saying oh just contact the dmv <laughs> You'll be on hold till the epidemic is over. Well, I think the patients who are listening, they should ask their dialysis, you know, what is their plan? This is a Absolutely. good exercise to be prepared. And every dialysis facility should have a disaster planning program in place, right? Yes. And uh, patients definitely should keep going to dialysis units to receive their treatments because dialysis patients depend on their treatments two or three times a week. And it's not time to panic and just to stay home even if you have flu-like symptoms. Another suggestion I can uh, make is to dialysis patients, uh, when they come and they have symptoms, the facility will contact their doctor and they will take it from there. But patients should not just make an assumption and to go to emergency room because number one, it's if they're sick, yeah. if they are sick, they can uh, infect, con- everybody. infect everybody over there. And if they are not sick, but somebody else is sick, they can get infected from that person in the emergency room. So, and as a matter of fact, a lot of hospitals right now urgent dialysis patients to keep going to their dialysis centers because they're already quite overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. And, you know, also uh, transplant patients, you know, with your medication, it's really important that right, you have... because your immune system's mm-hmm, down. But you also have enough medication on hand. Don't wait till you... Uh, you know, you, we really should have a 30-day supply. I know a lot of patients kind of, you know, stockpile their meds because the medication prescription runs out and then you they don't pay for you to renew it. You only get like four or five days supply and then you can reorder again. And it's really unfortunate because you need a, you know, more supply on hand. So you got to really understand your medication mm-hmm. situation. And, so it wouldn't uh, be good. Stockpile you know, it. You know, the, the, the dialysis cruises to Mexico, that would be really a bad <laughs> thing to do because they have dialysis cruises. I know they do. And they usually go to Mexico. They go all over the globe, but yes, I think it would be right now. And they serve Mexican food. We can control our own destiny. We can take charge of our health and ask questions about our medical options. We can form partnerships with our health care team. We can take steps towards self-improvement. We can be sensitive to the impact of our disease on our family. We can sing, dance, laugh, and enjoy our lives. We can appreciate today and look forward to tomorrow. We can help and support our fellow patients. We can pursue our hopes and dreams. We can make a difference. 